Hello guys, welcome to Ruby Tuesday number 59. Uh, those who hate slides, I'm glad to tell you that this is the only slide I have tonight. Uh, so welcome to Code Army. I mean, this is a cool place, right? Uh, any Code Army people here? No, right? They're all back. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, uh, uh, I forgot what my slides are. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, today we have uh, two talks for you guys. Uh, one is by me, one is by us. I don't have your titles yet, but it's okay. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so before that, uh, I'm Jimmy, I'm usually a, uh, your host, and uh, if you have any questions, yeah recommendations or whatnot, you can go and find me. Uh, and uh, we are the Care Ruby Brigade. Who is the first timer here? I know first timer. First timer. <laughs> first timer. Awesome. Nice to see you guys. Uh, we are on meetup.com usually. Uh, I don't know where did you find us. A true friend. A true friend. Ah, okay, good, good, good. If let's say uh, you want to follow us directly, you can go to meetup.com. <laughs> <laughs> also can. Uh, so it's meetup.com slash Ruby, uh, my, it's Ruby Malaysia. And uh, we also... So if you have more friends, you can invite them in as well. Oh yeah, so, or suddenly maybe you're not friends anymore, you can still follow us. <laughs> and uh, we are also on Facebook group, uh, which is facebook.com slash klxrb. And uh, we just normally post Articles and stuff there. We also on Slack. Uh, if you want to get yourself invited, uh, I don't have slides here, but yeah, let me know if you want to get yourself invited. I'll give you the information. Okay, cool. Uh, before that, uh, do we have any hiring shoutouts? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Postco is hiring. Um, front end, back end, full stack engineer. Uh, just go to postco.co, P-O-S-T-C-O, dot C-O, slash couriers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, submit your yeah. applications. Yeah, well, I can show you if you want. No, postco post something. Postco, <laughs> postco, C-O, dot C-O, what? Yeah, slash uh -huh. couriers. Oh, oh. 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 the Wi-Fi is fine blue. Password is A1. Show password, show password. A1, B3, F4. Can you here, F2. F3, F4. Uh, a and B with one to three points. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Careers. Where? Slash uh, hiring. Post school dot co slash careers. Okay, so you are hiring. Post like remember finding engineers and engineers. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice. Uh, who else? Anybody else? Yeah. If you go here, uh, I'm from I'm from managing and talent. Uh. Actually, we are uh, hiring, looking for the core founder for like uh, familiar with Ruby or. Oh, you guys are the one who posted on our Facebook group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just want the weekend uh -huh. staff payout. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so we are looking for. Looking for co-founder. Do you have a name for your company yet? Uh, actually, I have I have uh, one company that now I'm going to transform into another staff. I see. You don't have a name for the staff yet? Yeah. Okay, cool. Staff yeah. role. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you what's your name again? Uh, Hugo. Hugo. Awesome. Uh, who wants to be a co founder? <laughs> Look for Hugo. Uh, okay, cool. Um, anybody else? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, hang on one second. Okay, uh, I'm from Revenue Monster. Revenue Monster, yeah. Yeah, we're doing payment, so we are hiring full stack developer. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, full stack developer, Ruby, or uh, anything else? Anything else again? Okay, okay, okay. okay. all right. Uh, 
please send me a message as well if you can. Like then I'm going to post on my face, the Facebook group as well. Okay. After this, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, my name is Aris. I work for Periscope Data. Uh, we are not hiring uh, <laughs> yet. Uh, it's based, this company is based in San Francisco. I work there and I'm now transferred to Malaysia working remotely and I'm trying to convince them to open a company in Malaysia. <coughs> They're considering it, but I would say we're a year away from doing it, so I just wanted to mention that. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, cool. Are yeah. you guys a Ruby chef? Yes, Ruby yeah. Golang React. Oh, Ruby Golang React, okay. Go on at home. Okay. Um, yeah, so Fave is also hiring. Fave is hiring, um, yeah. And just raised funding recently, so Ooh. yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Uh, hiring uh, Ruby uh, on Rails. Ruby Rails and Rails developer, Golang developer. Yeah. Okay, a lot of you guys, please remember to send me like a and put, put it on the uh, Facebook group, alright? And uh, yes, uh, what else do I need to talk about? So, my boss asked me to shut up. Ruby on Rails and JavaScript developer from Rapid River. And uh, we are hiring Ruby on Rails developer. We are a first <laughs> dev shop based in KL. Our clients are mostly from US and Canada. Uh, that's it. Anybody else? No? Nobody else? Okay, so without further ado, let's come to our first <coughs> talk of the day. The limitations of technology, technology here, I have to stay. <laughs> so let me know if you can't hear me. And I will use the mic. Mic test, mic test, okay. Okay. Yeah? Why don't you have some more just code? Alright, yeah. Okay, so uh So it fires and fails, it forgets. So 
I have to come up with a very simple way to just log the calls. And overdo a lot of the setup. <coughs> so that's why I thought of serverless computing. So if it's the first time you heard about serverless computing, serverless is basically uh, usually you know referred to as a function as a service kind of a provider. Uh, Amazon Lambda is one of it. Uh, so meaning that you can actually just create a function and ask it to run this one function. You don't need to spin up servers. You don't need to set up uh, you know your 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 Rails or you know uh, web uh, web server like nginx and all this thing. You just want one function, right? Actually, because in my case, I just want to ingest the callback uh, from this. Uh, uh, analytics uh, third party app and store it in the database. I don't want to run anything else. I don't want to run Rails. I don't want to run any of these. So that's why uh, this is perfect for it because it's function as a service. I just want to run one function. Uh, and the way you pay for it uh, is usually by resource. And this resource are usually memory and also runtime. So uh, in Amazon's case, uh, <coughs> They charge by like a hundred millisecond block uh, times the amount of memory you use, uh, and there's a free tier up to like four hundred thousand of these. So it's pretty nice uh, uh, free tier that you can just play around or even use for like a very low traffic uh, app. Is it per uh, month or forever? I mean, is it per month? I think it's per month. Thanks for. Um, I might be wrong. Uh, so, and yeah, you build and run apps without really thinking about server at all, which is cool. Uh, and it basically limits all the infrastructure management tasks you need to do, like, you know, backups, setting up servers, again, <coughs> making sure that we have monitoring installed and all this crap. Um, you don't need to do any of that. And uh, scaling is automated, like, it comes with scaling and it's high. Uh, uh, together already because we are actually using Amazon's infrastructure and uh, and, and, and the uh, and the guarantee uptime that is very high and yeah you don't need to do anything else to make, make that happen and it increases your agility uh, in a way that you can uh, not have a lot of sunk costs into like setting up like a whole cluster just you know uh, and, and and you can actually have uh, scaling high uh, and higher <coughs> So uh, Amazon Lambda is one, but with just the ability to function, uh, call a function is not enough. Amazon also provides a, a service called API Gateway. And this is basically the gateway to the internet or the internet's gateway to say Lambda uh, in our case. So. Uh, API Gateway creates, uh, uh, lets you create and deploy uh, RESTful or WebSocket API uh, with scale. Uh, it basically just handles any incoming traffic for you. And whatever you tell it to do on a certain endpoint, for example, on a certain resource, it will just fire it. So you, you can actually fire uh, uh, anything from uh, 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 the uh, there's, there's a diagram. Yeah, yeah. With Lambda, you can you can you can route the traffic to EC2. You can route traffic to DynamoDB and all these things. And uh, yeah. all it, uh, and, and 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 again, you don't need to buy a server. You don't need to spin up EC2. You just need to set up the API gateway, and you are being charged by traffic, uh, which is cool because if you have no traffic, you don't need to pay for like a server that uh, you need to keep up for 24 hours, right? So yeah. Amazon API Gateway plus Lambda makes a really cool uh, and good solution for my use case uh, where I need to uh, reliably ingest some callbacks that will not be tried. So that's what I want to show you guys today. Uh, and Amazon Lambda is very cool because it supports uh, all sorts of languages. You have Go, you have Python, and obviously you have Ruby. Uh, that you can run Ruby codes on it. And let me show you very simply how it works. <coughs> so just get this up on Amazon. Uh, so 
So once you go into Lambda, you can just create a Lambda function from scratch. So it's, can you guys see? No. Yeah. Okay. That <laughs>
what happens if you don't create that is that uh, if, if you don't uh, select lambda proxy is that you have to define the re result, uh, return result here. So even though, like, say, I say, let's say, I do this again. So this is another endpoint, but this is a post, though. Uh, that doesn't have a lambda proxy <coughs> division. And you can see here that you have to define the HTTP, so it's always going to be 200. Yeah? And the output is just a pass through, so whatever you return in the lambda function, it will just pass through and return as a body. So using lambda proxy gives you the flexibility to control the uh, document status uh, from your function directly. So yeah, um, that's a pretty simple and quick overview on Lambda. Uh, let's go back to our uh, slide. So yeah, so what we did just now is manual work, right? We go in, um, so click here, create button on this. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, tools available, toolkits out there that you can just automate the hell out of all these things, right? Uh, so, uh, Sam stands for what idea? Serverless application model. <laughs> Serverless <laughs> application model. <coughs> so with Sam, uh, you can define your API proxy, your permissions, your lambda function, everything in like one package, and you can trigger it, and Amazon like will create all of this for you, which is perfect for your uh, provisioning and automation. Uh, there are other also other third-party toolkits like serverless, which I, I I I like to use as well because it's very simple. Uh, Zappa, I think that's for Python. Quanta is for Go and Apex is another like uh, uh, toolkit. So uh, third party toolkit. So you can use all of this. Uh, but today I want to talk about Get, uh, which is Ruby serverless uh, framework. And this is like Ruby on Jets. Yeah, Ruby on Jets. <laughs> so you know Ruby on Jets. Uh, this is their website. And yeah, it just says that you, you can actually use uh, Ruby and Jets to deploy entire API systems out there, even web pages, uh, uh, you know, like a Rails app. And uh, yeah, and everything is very automated. Uh, and let me show you a little bit more. So Ruby and Jets, uh, actually they, they don't call themselves Ruby and Jets, they just call themselves Jets. Uh, it, helps you create all the uh, endpoints. Like for example, if you have a route, that, uh, like a Rails route that goes to a certain action, it will just help you to create all of these and automatically point to the, uh, the, the relevant uh, method. So again, it's very similar to how you would run on Rails. And uh, yeah, you can actually just push it on uh, Lambda and API and everything will just work. And I have a short demo, you guys. Uh, so the this is gonna follow. Uh, it's pretty easy to follow. Uh, just like the demo. Uh, so you can just so. So what? Gems, gems install Jets. I already done that. Yes. Uh, jets <coughs> new. <coughs> and you can see that it's like Rails. It creates a whole bunch of scaffolding and stuff for you. I'm, I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that a little bit. <coughs> You are 
starting to see maybe a risk of the decline. <coughs> So you need to set up your AWS profile uh, so that you can you know, uh, connect uh, to the uh, deployment, uh, uh, so that you can do deployment when you need to just deploy it. And let's see what it is. So this is Ruby on Jets, and we, were, we have this uh, compose. Uh, source, compost, and it takes a while because it's connecting to the various networks as well. Push forward. Yeah. 
Let's go. Hi, my name is Haas. Hi, Haas. We're going to talk about some patterns in code refactoring. So I've thought of the title of this talk like a zillion times. I've changed it like five minutes ago. Because I still don't like it. I still don't know what it is, but that's all right. Okay, who here writes code? Hands up. What? Who here writes code? Do you write code? Code, code, don't lie. Okay, everybody, come on guys, I know you write code. Put your hands up, man. All timers, all timers also. This is not gonna end. Oh. If you write code, put your hands up, come on. Okay, who writes bad code? <laughs> Keep your hands up, yeah. Okay, who writes bad code intentionally? Who looks at it and be like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do today. <laughs> See, that's the most important thing. No one intentionally writes bad code. Bad code happens. Bad code happens because we write a lot of code, we have a lot of deadlines, we have a lot of things that happen along the way, and it's always someone else's code. Isn't someone else's code the worst code ever? Everybody hates someone else's code. It's never your code, your code is great. Okay? Someone else's code made the app shit. All right, so uh, recently I've taken a look at uh, like an app, um, and it had some little bit of interesting code that uh, we worked through how to refactor it just a little bit. So we're gonna take a look at what the code was. All right. Mm, yep, it's not, it's not very clear, right? Nice. Okay. Yep, it's really huge. <laughs> There's right. a bundle line 55. Yep, all right. <laughs> Is this better? Can we see it a little bit better? Uh, yeah, a little bit, or do we need more zooming? Well, the camera is definitely not yep, do <laughs> having any of it. Do we need someone to zoom a little bit? <coughs>
based on the content that we generate, and then we pass in the call method. Okay, they send SMS, we'll call here. Is this code good? All right, cool. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, press the next, uh, the arrow. No arrow? No, no. Zoom out? Zoom out. Yep, next. No. Down? Down arrow? Down? No. Uh, wait. Yep, navigator, thank you. Okay. All right. Zoomy, zoomy. No, I just give you this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of code in here. Okay. So, uh, so right now we have the second method. It's called get content, and this get content method is a lot hairier. Uh, same thing, based on status. Okay, and these status are booked, collect by courier, arrives at consignee agent, and there's one more, uh, deliver, uh, scroll up just a tab. Yep, and collect by consignee. Okay, all this method does is that it gets the status, okay, and then it gives you back some text. But there is some check right here, else. What happens right here? Okay? So if you are not uh, passing in the right status, it raises an exception. Okay? So please just just give the next slide. Yeah. Alright. Uh, so two things. Uh, go back to, uh, go back to the second slide, sorry. Yeah. So now we can see there's a lot of inconsistency. If this is not valid, what do we return? Yeah. This uh, method could return no. Okay, and if we go down, everything's successful. Okay, and no, no. Errors. What does it return? True or false. Okay, true or false. Is that what it returns? Is there a possibility that it returns false? validate and then there are no errors anymore so if we pass that line we'll never gonna like it's always gonna return true so now we know this app returns uh, this method returns nil and that's in the in the in the next slide so if we go like is exception it raises an exception okay so we try to fail softly and then other times we just try to fail really, really hard. Okay? Yep. Also, so there's a lot of inconsistencies here, okay? Sometimes we validate and sometimes we raise There's also inconsistency in the way the syntax is written. Okay? This this piece of thing, we're just like variables and then we're passing them here. As opposed to that on top, we're just passing into the parcel object, you know, like we're, we're in the code and then there is inconsistency in the way this method is behaving. Next slide, please. Pretty quick. All right, next slide. Let's see. Cool. All right. So what is the consistency that we're looking for? The hidden exceptions. Okay. So these are like methods that are really dangerous. Because one, what error It was raising standard error. Okay, so there's no not for you to catch it. Okay, so this is also really really dangerous. So I'm not gonna think that you're gonna raise something because there's nothing for me to catch. Okay, so and if I see you using this method elsewhere, you're not catching an exception, so I'm not gonna catch it either. Okay, so follow a design pattern. This does not mean a design pattern in terms of like uh, code smells and not. We will come to that in a little bit. But if your code Raises exceptions. If it fails really hard, fail really hard all over the place. Okay, be consistent. If you're gonna try to catch errors softly, catch them softly and then return false. That's all fine and good. Okay, and then follow the code style. Each code base will be cluttered if you do not have a code style and if you follow. This does not mean you shouldn't change the way this code is written. If it's, if you think you're writing better code, change other places as well. Don't leave it cluttered. Okay. Next slide. Thank you, Jimmy. All right. So we're going to take a look at this. We're going to say, like, all right, no exceptions. All right. So we're just going to validate softly. Everything's going to be well and good. So we have a validation because essentially this is what's happening. Okay. The, the switch statement does not know what it might be getting. So we validate. Is the status in here? Cool. It's going to say invalid. If it's not, then it's going to return false. And then over here, we're going to say return false. 
and that's valid, return empty. So now we've changed the consistency, we're returning true false, and we're not raising any exceptions. Good? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. I have, I have like a bad hearing. Okay, so there is a problem with this code. Can you zoom out just a little bit? Yes, just enough, that, that's it. There's a problem with this code, and I'll tell you it is somewhere in the method initialization. What is it? Yeah, call to get phone. What is wrong with get phone? Uh, no, no. So it's like get phone. It's like it's not validated yet. That's not validated. Yeah. All right. That's a really good one. Okay. So the method is not validated. So parcel could be that dodgy item that we're scared of. Okay. So what do we do? What do we do now? Okay, so like there is a chance parcel is not here yet. Okay, so what we can do, one thing, is that we move this down here. Okay, so we check after the call. But in our uh, like validation, we're checking for phone number. So if this is not initialized by this line, this will be invalid code. Okay, or so so again, now there is a chance that this code still blows up. Okay, so there's still a chance for a no method error. So what is this, what is this uh, validation really doing? Nothing. All right, next slide. So this validation is just fear, OK? You are defensively trying to make sure an object exists, OK, when you don't really have to, OK? Uh, is this, wait, you are the next slide? Or not? Yeah, yeah, next slide. Oh, OK. okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so uh, over here, we, uh, if you scroll down, okay, so by the, by the virtue of the validation, uh, someone, someone, there, yeah. okay, we've removed the exception. Okay, so now there's no more exception. Next slide. Okay, so now we know that we don't like the validation. Okay, there's a lot of problems that, that are coming. We don't know who's to validate first, how to validate, okay, it, it's not a problem. Okay, I'll zoom back out, please, all, all the way up. Okay, so just by looking at this code in this way, Okay, <coughs> what can we see? Some could be bigger, some are small. Sure, okay, so, so there, there is a giant, you know, like, method that is holding it together, okay, and there's two of them that do status checking. Okay, there are two methods in here that check by status. Okay, we don't like that. Okay, so this is red code. And our validation is in orange, not the best choice of colors, I see now. Okay, so that's our validation, our yellow validation, and then we have uh, our valid, and then we check errors. All that is validation code defensive. Okay, we don't know what the object is. Why is this possible? And the green is the only part of the method that does what the class says it does. What? That's crazy. Yep, thank you. <laughs> All right, so what we want to do is get rid of this. How are we going to do this? So. Uh, th there's no concrete one method. There's no one way that's correct. So we're going to look at a few. Okay, we're going to look at it incrementally and progressively. The most important thing to know when refactoring is that it is very, 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 very likely that your code continues to grow. Okay, and you're not going to refactor that same second. <coughs> okay, your code is going to increase, and then your ideas of what the problem is is also change. Okay, it also changes with time. Your knowledge of what the code does and what your how your system behaves changes all the time. Okay, so there's it's really really hard for you to jump straight to the end. You'd be like, yep, that's the answer. It's hard. So we're gonna take a look at a few. Okay, let's go. Next one. Okay, so the key takeaway from this is why do we validate? Because we are unsure. Okay, and what are we trying to get when we are unsure? <laughs> Guarantees. Okay, so the first thing that we're looking for is guarantees. I want to be guaranteed. I want to get an object that is going to respond and be a guarantee that this is a parcel. Okay, it's not a parcel, something that behaves like a parcel, all right? So let's go and look at that. Back to our code, look at it. Okay? All right, next one. We're just looking at it. Okay, trying to remember it, okay? Trying to remember the shape. That's the most important thing. Look at the shape. First thing, tell, don't ask. How many times was the code asking in that? A lot, okay? So first one, easy one that we're gonna look at, okay? So we're asking, hey, is your status booked? If it is, I'm gonna do something. If it's not, 
do something else. Okay? This is asking. If you have a task at work, do you find any random person in the company you'd be like, do it? And then they'd be like, I'm not a developer. And then they have to come back to you. No, you've got to look for a developer. Okay? You've got to look for the right person to tell. Okay? This is not looking for the right person to tell. This is asking. We want to always be telling. Okay? Next slide, please. Right. Okay. So first things first. Who can we ask? Who knows the recipient of the SMS? The parcel. Okay? So the parcel knows who it belongs to. Okay? And the parcel can, inside this class, can know its own status. And it knows whether it's the sender or the consignee. Okay? Now again, we pushed the question, we pushed the decision of who to send it to to the last possible second. Okay? We don't want to know. In our service, we don't want to know who it is. So, and then we have SMS notification recipient, okay, and it's gonna respond the same way, whether it's sender or consignee. They both respond to the method phone. Oh cool. Next one. So this is one tiny improvement. So our code has shrunk just a we do not have the validations anymore, okay, and we do not have uh, our get phone number method anymore. So, to that one line. Remember that one green line at the bottom? It goes up because that's the only method that we're calling. It's the phone number, but we still get the content, okay? Kind of okay, kind of not okay, debatable. Right, so over here, what are we doing? Um, we're actually telling. So we're telling the parcel <coughs> to give us the tracking number, the agent, and we're getting. Okay, this is good code. Okay, so, but we have a lot of it. Like repeating code pattern. Okay, it's very, very repetitive. Let's see what we can do. All right. All right. So. Now we want to delegate it to another class that handles the SMS content. Okay, this class just deals with SMS content and nothing else. Does that sound like a good class? Right? Cool. Okay, so this class takes a parcel and it figures out, you know, the collab. The string just returns content. Every single method here does how many things? One thing. Every uh, this One, there you go. So we only have content to work with, okay? And that's all we need, okay? Usually, you can have more, but most of the time you just need one. All right, next one. So we have, this is for booked parcel. And then now, getting the code in here, we're, part, we're delegating it to a class. Again, we're pushing the decision to the last possible. So, and then again, and then again, and again, and again. Same thing, okay? Same. Okay, of this type. All right, all good? All right, all good the same. Uh, can you zoom out, please? Can you go back to the next slide, uh, for a previous slide, and then? Very hard <laughs> instruction. <laughs> okay, so now, now that we have this, now we have some clear code that we can take a look at, the code can start talking to us. We can start seeing what's going on with the code. Okay? There's a lot of repetition here in terms of like how we initialize the object, who we delegate to, where we get locale, and where we get you know like the consigning uh, agent. Okay? So there's a lot of repetition here. What can we use here to reduce this repetition? Anyone? Anyway. Yep, yeah, there you go. We can use some inheritance. All right, next slide. So inheritance and polymorphism are important parts of OO design, okay? When we try to write OO code, don't disregard these. These are really, really important parts, okay? A lot of time we think, like, I don't want to create a really long hierarchy chain. Sure, don't create something that's too long, but you still should use these. These are tools that you have. Use the tools that you've been given. Next slide, please. All right, so now we have a base 
parcel, you know, like SMS content for a base parcel. So all it does is initializes the object, it knows who to delegate some stuff to, and it knows how to get locale. Okay, these these are methods that all of the classes are you know responding to. Next please. Okay, and then now we just you know like inherit off of them. Look, suddenly, 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 all they know about is the actual content. Okay? When you take a look at this code, you take a look at this class, what does it tell you? Only content. Okay? No need to know how it's initialized, you just need to know how it gives you the content. When you come and change content, you change it in one place. Yeah? Okay, next please. So, now, very, very interesting. Now we've created some type of hierarchy, right? Okay? So, we have SMS content, and then we have like book parcel and stuff. So, what has happened here? This is a folder that you have namespaced your code into, and these are files. Okay? For the first time, this code is actually represented in the code structure. The code structure, when you take a look at the app, it tells you immediately, you can know immediately what are the types of SMSs that you can send. Before this, you didn't know. Okay? You have to go and check through the code, and you have to scroll to the bottom of the content method, and you have to find out what are the types. Okay? But now you can, by sight, by, by going through this app, you know. Okay, if we have a new SMS content class that we want to create, where do we put it? Right there. So it has taken the decision of where do I put this code, how much do I extend, where do I put, how do I try to make it uh, more flexible, it's taking it completely out, okay? All I need to do is just replicate this. All right, next slide. All right, so very, very important. If you, if you go back to the previous slide and if you look at the names, right? So you have book parcel, collect by courier, okay? So first one, booked is uh, past tense. Collect by courier, this is the present tense. Present tense and the present tense. Okay, so we have a bit of a mismatch here. Okay, so very, very important. Can you go back down? Okay, yeah. So very, very important that we need to name things as well as we can, okay? Naming is really, really hard, okay? Spend time on it. Okay, so right now, we also have other SMS types, so we want to namespace it. This is what's gonna happen with parcels. Okay, and this is all of our methods. Now they're a bit more descriptive. They just say like what the status is. It is booked. It is uh, you know like uh, collected by courier and all this kind of stuff. And again, now when we look at this class, we know we have SMS content for parcels. If we have an SMS content for user, where do we put it? Right here. Next slide, please. Very very important. Naming is hard. It really is, okay? It's so like half the time, I have no idea what the, what the name is. A lot of the times, the names that I end up coming up with come from code reviews, okay? It's not even just me by myself, you know, like, ah, yeah, I'm just gonna take this. There a lot of times, other people give a lot of really good input, okay? But it's important to also find how your app has been named for, okay? And try to follow, and try to improve on that. Next one, yeah, so spend as much time as you can on it, because it's really, really hard. Uh, find very, very descriptive words. It's really good. All right, so now, again, we're trying to extend our class. We have parcel, agent, and user. Again, we have not even run the code. We can take a look at this directory, and then we know immediately that SMS is happening for these kind of objects and these kind of instances. Translate your app structure to tell a story. Okay? A lot of the time, we just rely on everything is in the model, or we have everything named, blah, 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 service. That's usually not a good name. You don't have to name something service. It's a service object. You don't have to create this. You don't name your user model, user model. Why do we keep naming things? Send SMS service. Okay? We can pick better names than that. SMS sender. That's what the object is. Okay, we, we the SMS receiver, whatever that object is, we can have better names. Not everything that is not an active record model is a service. Okay, you can create regular ass objects. It's fine. All right, next. All right. So now we're back to our status method. Our status method is well and good. Now it looks like this. Our code can help talk to us a little bit more. Next slide. We found another pattern. Okay, we're initializing some stuff and getting the content of them. 
we know how to get rid of this, right? Anybody? How do, how do we get rid of this? Fifi looks like he has an answer. Andy, you have an answer, I know. Um, basically, you have um, a parcel of Jack uh -huh. that would um, respond to the same um, message, which is I like it. Is content. You're thinking in the future. I like it, but we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so the first thing right now is that we want to get rid of new parcel content. Okay, what we can do, instead of initializing the class, we can tell some other method to initialize the class. All we need to do is tell what the class is. Next slide. All right, so now we have content class. Okay, so content class gets sent to content. We put, we put in that parcel again, and then we just say like, hey, give me content. Good, all these methods respond to the same method, content. All good? All right, next. Ruby is flexible. Okay, don't be afraid to use Ruby specific features. That doesn't mean write all the metaprogramming you can think of, okay? So one thing about metaprogramming is that, let's just say, if we, if we go back to this code. If, if, if right over here, right, if we have picked a name word to like, oh, status dot, capitalize, constantize, and all this kind of thing, we cannot grab the app. We cannot search where this is being called. It is usually, usually really, really hard to know. Okay, and like the more you onboard newer developers, the more lost they're gonna be. Okay, the more meta programming you have, it is there's a lot of really good functions or like uses of it. Okay, usually DSLs are a really really good part of it. Okay, but just this constantize this sometimes makes it you know like really difficult to find out which object is being called where. We don't like that. Okay. I, I say we, I mean we. We don't like it. Okay, okay. Next one. So Ruby is flexible. Bend it. Okay. But be conscious, okay? Your code is being read all the time. There are new people reading your code, you are reading your code, and it's, if it, there's two S constantized everywhere, you're not gonna find it, okay? You're gonna, the only thing that you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be graphing your, your, like, uh, your SMS content by the content, okay? And this is really difficult to find. All right, let's go. Next one. Okie dokie, so now, all right, so now our service is looking a lot more spanking. It's really good, okay? so. Again, we have just one thing. Right now, all the methods do one thing, right? We get a class, we parse out, blah, blah, blah. All good? All good. Next slide. So we, we got it from that one line that couldn't be read. We, we're coming down smaller. Now, we started sending the SMS notification, like SMS notification recipient to the parcel object. So we moved it down the chain to the parcel object, right? Can we do the same for content? I thought we had removed the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like a, it was a code that was re-put there. So forget about <laughs> the, the exception. <laughs> it was like, uh, so because this code is actually a PNG. So like I had to like keep putting it to the PNG, coming back, exporting it. It was really nightmare. Okay, so this is gone. Okay. <laughs> so right now, we can move the thing back to the parcel. Okay, now our parcel not only re responds to SMS notification recipient, what does it respond to that is important? SMS notification content. Okay, is this code good? I don't know. You're thinking in the future as well. We're gonna get that. Okay, so the one good thing, there's one amazing thing about this. By moving it to the parcel, what did we create? We created a guarantee that there's a parcel object. Okay? We are no longer sending a logic object because we're telling the parcel object to give me the content. Okay? So now there is a guarantee that this message is being responded to by a parcel. And if it's not, to hell with it. We shouldn't have called it to begin with. Okay? So that's one really good thing. Okay, so like now we set a service called the notification content. So, really good. That's the good thing about this code. So we can try to think what we can, what else we can do. Call on camera, gonna think this was amazing. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so now, back to our service. Now this is all our service looks like. Do we still need this service? I don't know, do we? 
All it does is just delegates it to SMS and job. Okay? We can we can pop these objects here ourselves, right? We can? Can we? I don't know. We can. We probably should. All right. So now our uh, personal SMS service class. Say goodbye to it. Prepare to be slow. We're gonna be sad. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nice having you. All right. Next slide. Okay. It's gone. And now we're back to looking at just the parcel. Now the parcel and the SMS notification, everything is back in here. But there seems to be a little bit of a problem. Pippi just mentioned it. What, what is it? <laughs> the code is going to tell us something. Click right here. Next slide, my man. Yep. See, the code is telling us something. OK? There's a lot of these prefixes and a suffix. Prefix. Prefix, prefix. What does this tell us? Something is hiding. Something is hiding. There is an object in here. Okay? And it has a good name. Because we've been using it all along. Okay? What is the name? As a notification. Next slide, please. Alright, five fine objects. Okay? In prefixes and suffixes. This is an important place to know. If you have some last order received in your user model, there's a problem there. There is a problem. Okay, you, you need to find out why you have it there. Okay, what is this code smell called? There's a smell to it. There's a name to the smell. When the class that you are in, where the class has class uh, has like features of another class. Teacher envy. Okay, this is an envious code. This code wants to get out. Just another object. Next slide, please. All right. So all we need to do again. Oh. SMS notification, take it, zoom in just a little bit at the top. We didn't do anything to the code, okay? We've just changed self to parcel. We've just removed, like we've just changed this, uh, the, uh, the receiver of the object, and all is good, yeah? So now we have unearthed this new object that was hiding in our parcel class, okay? SMS notification, next class, uh, next slide. And, and in our parcel, all we need to do is just say SMS notification, okay? So and then we send it to self, and then now everything about it has been delegated away, okay? We don't need to know anymore. The, the SMS notification object knows how to deliver itself, how to find its own content, how to get its own number. All is good. All we need to tell it is, next slide, deliver. That's it. <coughs> we don't care. We just tell it. We're not asking. We're like, do you know how to send an SMS? I don't know. You tell me. Okay, the answer is always yes. Do it. Do this. Okay, next slide. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, why, why does the parcel that the SMS to deliver? So we can create a guarantee. So we can always know that the parcel responds to this object. Yeah. Shouldn't the parcel thinking in the deliver? Future? Okay, it, it, uh, sorry? Shouldn't the parcel say deliver SMS? No. So because, like, what if we want to get just the content? So we're just delegating. So we can say deliver SMS notification, and then that just calls like uh, deliver. That's all. That's also fine. Whatever you want to do. Okay. So it's like you're getting a new object. So you can do whatever you want with it. All right. Maybe you want to delay that uh, uh, sending to another time. You want to delegate it somewhere else. It's fine. All right. So now let's take a look at our class. We're still not happy with this. Why are we not happy with this? Okay. We have a new color. We have blue. So again, so let, let's take a look at uh, orange first. We still haven't gotten rid of something. Ask. The switch statement. Okay, we're still asking for that mm, status. You're like, what is your status? I don't know. Okay, we still don't know the status before we create this object. It's not good. We're not telling. We're still asking. Okay, this code is much better than what we started off with, but we're still asking. Okay. By the way, if, if if you want to know, there is like there is a design pattern for this kind of code, and it is okay to use. It's called a factory pattern, okay, where you have an object that creates another object. In this instance, it's just a method, okay, but we can create it as an object on its own that just gives you the class of another object, okay. That's that's also well and good. So this is not terrible code, but but okay, it's not giving us a good enough story. Let's take a look here. We've missed this line. Because like we highlighted it as green and we forgot about it, right? Okay. What does what does it say in blue? What are the what, what are the arguments that we're passing in? Hmm? Phone and content. Phone and content. 
What should we really be fussing in? Mm -hmm. So what should we be passing in? SMS, right? It's like we still haven't figured this out. We have this SMS code happening, but we still don't have nothing that is called SMS. Okay? And then we know this always goes together. This is another code smell. What is this code smell called? When you have two objects that always need to exist with each other. Because if I send an SMS to just a phone number, that is useless to the business sending like empty strings. Okay, and if I just send a string to no number, that's invalid. Okay, so these two objects need to exist together for it to be a valid SMS object. What is this code smell called? Data club. Data club, exactly. Okay, whenever you have two or more like uh, data variables, attributes, or you know data values that need to coexist together, there's an object. Okay, and the code smell is called a data club. All right, let's take a look. Cool. Find hidden objects. They're always hidden objects. <coughs> okay? Next slide, please. In this instance, do we set it right? This is a data clone. We have this a lot. How many of you have this code in your app? Start date, comma, end date. Raise your hands. <laughs> Everybody. What is start date, comma, end date? It's a date range. Why don't we pass a date range? That's, that's, that's the truth of it, but you know, that, that's what it is, right? All right, so what is an SMS? We talked about this just now. What do we need to make an SMS? Yeah, that's it. So let's, let's have this in the app, okay? Again, we have a, two other things. We have some other things as well. Now we have the, 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 the concept of an SMS notification, okay? And the SMS content. What is an SMS notification? And what is SMS content? Yeah? Okay, there's, there's, some, there's something going on here, right? Is, is the notification when you actually send it before? Is it the read status? What is the notification? We still don't know, okay? Like now that we think about it, it's not really the best name that we could have picked, okay? And then SMS content. An SMS requires content and a phone number. We don't have an SMS phone number class, okay? And we don't have an SMS class either. So, have we split our objects too far? That could always happen. We can abstract too much, okay? Because when you don't understand the full context of the app, or when you don't have a good grasp of, you know, like what's going to happen, what's going to change, or who changed it and why, we can abstract wrong, okay? So let's take a look what we can change. Too. First of all, let's have this context in our app, okay? Let's have the concept of an SMS in the app. We need a phone number and a content. Does this say what it is? So an SMS, what does it do? It knows about its phone number, knows about its content, and it knows what to do, how to send itself. Okay? This is good. Okay? Let's go, next one. And, sorry, go back, one last thing. And now, we don't send phone number and content separately. We send an object that responds to phone number and to content. Okay, so the SMS job, not uh, like uh, the send SMS job, just receives an SMS, like the name says, and then it responds to phone number and content. Okay, let's go. All right, and then now we have math specific SMSs. Okay, if we change the classes, the classes that we created for SMS content, okay, we change them to SMSs. They already know how to get content. We need to teach them two things how to deliver itself, and where to find the phone number. Remember, there was also a switch type on the phone number, where like, if it's booked, send it to this phone number, send it to the user or like uh, the sender, and then to the, you know, the consignee, okay? Now, this is our base parcel SMS, okay? This inherits from SMS, okay? It takes a parcel. All of our par like, uh, parcel SMSs require the same object, parcel. It knows how to get its phone number, guess how to get locale, consign a company. These are all the things that we need. Okay, now we need to tell we need to tell the actual SMS how to get the content. Next slide. That's it. So same SMS that we had just now, the same SMS content object that we had just now, but it's now an SMS. So the only thing now it knows how to get its phone number. 
now we thought it like to, to behave like an SMS. It's an SMS on a status. Let it be an SMS. Okay? It's nothing different. Okay, now it knows how to get content and, and look on top. Line two. What does it say? Private. Private. There's nothing public about this. All of them are just gonna respond to deliver. Okay, that's all we need to, that's all we need SMSs to do. Okay, and then now, also, what do we have if you go down? Yeah. No, 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 and the next time. Yep, and this is our best case scenario, where an SMS is very standard, okay, and it has nothing different about it, it just needs to tell us the, the content. That's it, this is our best case scenario, okay? If we're lucky, our code is full of objects like these. Okay, small objects that just do one very, very, very specific thing. Okay, next slide. All right, so now, this is how we used to call the object, the send SMS object. We used to pass it this through a parcel and tell it booked. Okay, booked is a status. Okay, over here, it's a hard coded string. Over here, it's a concept. It's a living object in your in your code base, okay? That should be represented as such, okay? Why do you delegate a concept as big as a booked SMS notification to being just a string, just a you know symbol, okay? It shouldn't, okay? We know when are we sending this thing, and then now whenever we look we look at this thing, what, what do we know? We know exactly which SMS is being sent. We know which class, where to look. Okay, we give it parcel, dot deliver. <coughs> Next one, please. And then, okay, so again, we look at our code, okay? Now we know our SMS and parcels, they look like this, okay? Let's just say now, we wanna create emails. Where do we add them? Same level. Same level? As SMS. As SMS, yep. Take a look. Next slide, please. Now we're looking at a very, very concrete of like a understanding of the app through looking at the code structure. Okay, this is really important. Okay, so like notifications, it tells you like we have two different types of notifications. Okay, we have email and SMS. We could have a third, we could have fax. Okay, where would it go? You will never need to make that decision. Guess what, never make that decision again. You know exactly where it's going. Okay, and you know how it's going. Okay, next slide. We're almost Okay, make your code base easily extensible. All the time, I always think this thing. Do I put this in live? Do I put this in models? Do I put this in services? There's always this question, okay? It's because these questions were not answered earlier, okay? So always be answering these things. Don't just shove it anywhere. Don't just be like, nobody will know. We just need to, like, it's all right. Spend a little bit more time on it, okay? So the important takeaway is, you have this code in your app, you have shitty code, you have written shitty code, you have participated in the application and used your shitty code, it's fine, okay? When do you refactor? That's always the question. I have no time, I can't do it. I, start slow, okay? Start slow. So like, if you see as something as little as, you know, like our <coughs> translation file, like our translation object we're receiving, like uh, sometimes local variables, sometimes, you know, like uh, variables on the object, just as easy as that. You can clean that up as you go along, do it. If you can, do it, okay? If you can just remove one object that you're currently working on, that's a big win, okay? If you can just, even if there's duplication in the code, duplication is all right, okay? Don't just write more code in the same place just because I want to create more duplication. No, think about it, okay? Take a second, okay? Let's go, that's all. Alright, so uh, OOP to me means, not me, like uh, only messaging, messaging. So again, what we were doing is passing messages around. Okay, now we do not ask parcel, what is your status? Now we tell an object, deliver yourself. Okay, that's messaging, message passing. One object telling one object to do something without knowing how it does it. Okay, we don't need to know. Okay, local retention, what does local retention mean? Object should know about itself. Stop passing an object for some other object to know about it. 
if you pass an object and that object is switching on that new object's uh, case statement, something is wrong. It's not always, you know, like, ah, you can't do this, this is wrong, 100% science, this is science, and, you know, like, uh, religion said, don't do this. It's not, okay? But take and pick, okay? Usually, these are code smells. Usually, there is a sign that this is not going to be good. Okay, and protection. So retention and protection. Protect your own attributes, your own data. Okay, other objects should not be asking you for your own data so much. Okay, they should be telling you, go do something for me. Because that's what you are, you're an object that does something. Okay, let that object do something. Okay, and tell it when you want it to do something. Hiding of state processes. How do you do it? I don't care. How does an SMS get sent? I don't care. Just send it. That's all I need to know. Is it sent or not? That's all I need to know. An extreme late binding of all things. Push the decision of who does what, which object responds to what, to the last possible moment. This is one of the most important things about a like, uh, programming language like Groovy. Okay, we can override a method right before calling it. Okay, nothing is static. Okay, that's why it's a very, very dynamic language. So we have the ability to do extreme late binding. So let's do it. Okay, that's it guys. That was the end. Next slide. Peace. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for us. Thank you for us. Thank you for us. If you have any questions, I will not answer. The only question I will not answer is, when do I do refactoring? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> any questions? Huh? What? Yes, you uh, one big challenge is that refactoring process yes. is very long. How do you know when you're on the right track? You you really don't. So so th that, that was the thing, right? It's like we looked at one object and then we got along to like we found out more and more about it. So sometimes you're lucky that you are, you know, like you understand the thing a little bit better than you know like uh, than you can. So then you have the ability to create these objects and uh, you know, like uh, think of the concepts that this object is, you know, encapsulated. Okay, but sometimes you just don't. Okay, and it's fine. So like refactor one way, and then the next time you figure something out, throw this code out. Code isn't permanent. Okay, and doesn't have your name on it. Has a give blame, but doesn't have your name on it. <laughs> don't be sad if it gets thrown out. Uh, stop checking give blame to begin with. But <laughs> yeah. I wonder, like, what's the task task coverage for the original implementation that oh. you had before zero? <laughs> so did you do the oh. task first? Or yeah. Did you, yeah. Yeah. So you always have to do the test first. Yeah. Even if, if the test is shitty, okay? Shitty test is okay. You know, like uh, test code should always be as more as straightforward as possible. If you have ten lines in that method that say it should, then ten straight lines, that's fine. Okay, as long as it really explains what it does, has actual object, it has uh, objects that you know are communicating and doing the right thing. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we have anything else? No, we don't have anything else. Uh, uh, Harry Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, we have Harry. Well, we did have Harry Charlotte. No, there's one more. Oh, there's one more. Yay! <laughs> okay, come. Uh, so. Uh, I'm actually on behalf of someone else, <laughs> but uh, Asia Big Law Kitchen and Bahar is looking for uh, a Ruby and JavaScript developer. So Ooh. if anyone do like back end or front end, then like say again to me afterwards. Ruby, uh, sorry, Asia. Asia Big Law Kitchen and Bahar. Oh, Big Loyalty Center. Yeah. Bahar. So you can search for like AsiaBig.com, and then they have some assets that is built on Ruby and Bill's back end, so okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Also please remember to send me a short blurb about that. Okay. Because yeah, that's like six of you guys. How do we apply for the job? Yeah, how do we apply for a job? Uh, so far we don't have like a, a job point yet. What? For for this position <laughs> because it's like a new position. Uh you can talk to me later and then I'll I'll give like context. Okay. What's <laughs> Uh, Hafiz. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that good <laughs> question. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, any shout outs? I think I think we have one more shout out for the code uh, yeah, uh, code yeah, thingy, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm speaking on behalf of Saf, the founder of Kodami himself. So actually, uh, he hosted the event for tonight. So basically, like, I'm just gonna share about Kodami Dojo. 
So Credit Radio is something, it's a somewhat a program to actually cultivate logical thinking through programming in kids. And that's what like Konami itself is trying to do in order to actually like generate this uh, generation of coders, a young generation of coders. So it will be a weekly event to actually like um, train kids from age 10 to 15, if I'm not mistaken, just now he highlighted, mm. for them to actually like learn exposed to the world of programming. But this itself. is something like uh, like different than Coder Dojo, right? Yeah, different like than Coder Dojo, but, but, yeah, but the concept yeah. itself is based on Coder Dojo mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. okay. it's going to be a peak event, if I'm not mistaken, by, as highlighted by Zaf. Uh -huh. um, I think for further com communication in terms of this, you yeah, can I discuss back with Zaf. I will, I will bring Zaf yeah, for, sure. for more info so that we can post the group. Yeah, but basically we are looking for volunteers. If you are interested in teaching kids uh, about like coding and stuff, like, please Stay tuned and uh, I'll, I'll have more information on uh, our Slack and our Facebook. <laughs> okay, uh, I, mean, I don't think we have time for Ruby, Ruby share oh, no, tips. Like 10, 10. Yeah, we don't have time for tips. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, okay, that's it then. Uh, no more hiring shout outs. And uh, we don't have a meetup next month because it's Chinese New Year. That's why we have it this week. <laughs> you know, like, First week is New Year, and then next week, next month is Chinese uh, Year. So yeah, so we're gonna have a meetup next month. Uh, we'll be back on uh, March. Okay, All right. So thank you very much for coming. Uh,